Welcome to Math in a Box with Susan Johnsey. In this lesson we are going to learn how to uh, solve rational inequalities. Now there's quite a few skills that you must have before you learn how to uh, solve rational inequalities. You really need to go back and watch the video that I have listed here, Solve Quadratic Inequalities. Using a number line with pluses and minuses is the best method. There's actually two videos that I did, but you want to watch the one that uses the number lines and the pluses and the minuses. This is the example here, but you'll need to look at that video before you watch this one. You'll notice that I've actually added two more concepts that you need to know in the prior video. There were five concepts, now there's seven. Number six says, when does a fraction equal zero? If you have a fraction, I'm sure you know this from uh, middle school, such as one-fifth, that does not equal zero. But how could I change this so that it would equal zero? Well, the numerator would have to be zero. That's the only way to make a fraction equal zero is if your numerator is zero. Zero divided by five is equal to zero. So when does a fraction equal zero? If the numerator, I'm just going to abbreviate that, equals zero. All right, now then, when is a fraction undefined? An undefined fraction would be a fraction that has a denominator that is zero. The denominator is zero, so don't confuse these two. Five divided by zero, I like to call that five zeroths. You've never heard of a zeroth, right? Five zeroths is undefined. So here, when is a fraction undefined? It's undefined if its denominator equals zero. And we need to know both of these um, ideas, these topics, in order to solve rational inequalities. Now let's look at our rational inequality. 3x squared plus 10x minus 8 is our numerator. And 5 minus x squared is our denominator. That makes our, our rational expression. It's called an inequality because we have less than or equal to zero. If something is less than zero, that means it's negative. So we want our expression here to be negative or zero. First thing we need to do is factor the numerator. The numerator is uh, 3x squared plus 10x minus 8, and we must factor that. It should factor easily for you. Uh, remember that is the skill that you need prior to this lesson. It will become 3x uh, in the first parenthesis and x in the second one. And if you think about it, you will need a negative 2 here and a positive 4 here. So our numerator factors into these two factors. Now our denominator is actually two factors. I'm going to write both of those down so that you see those clearly. I don't want you to forget that there really are two of these. When we get into solving this problem, that will be very important for you to remember there are two of those. Alright, now we want this to be less than zero, so that means we are trying to make this big expression here negative. Or we are trying to make it equal zero. But how does a fraction equal zero? We discussed that on number six. So for this part, we will look at number six. We will make the numerator equal zero, and we will have that part of the problem accomplished. But we also need to know when this big expression is negative. And that's where I'm going to use number lines. Each factor gets its own number line. Let's take the 3x minus 2. Our first factor, draw a number line for it. On each number line, you want to make note of where this factor will equal zero. Where does 3x minus 2 equal zero? It equals zero if x is a two-thirds. All right, I'm going to mark zero on my number line here so I know exactly where zero is. Two-thirds is a positive number. That's to the right, so I'll just mark over here to the right of the two-thirds, uh, to the right of the zero a two-thirds. Alright, our next factor is x plus 4. x plus 4 equals 0. 
if x is a negative 4. So our number line here becomes, uh, now we do have to keep these lined up. Let me say that. So I'm going to put 0 here again so I keep these lined up. Now this is a negative 4. Uh, negatives would be to the left of the 0. I will mark that here. Negative 4. All right, the next one is 5 minus x. And where does that equal 0? Now this one's a little different. The x is negative over here. I'm going to move the x to the other side so it becomes positive. So we will get an answer of 5 equals x or x equals 5. You can say it either way. Again, I draw my number line. I've got to keep the zeros lined up here. And x is 5 would be over to the right. It would be farther right than the 2 thirds. So make sure you go farther over to the right. But you don't want to go all the way to the end because we need to have some room on the end of our number lines. Just like I did on this negative 4, I don't really need to go quite to the end. So you may want to make them a little longer. All right, now we have a second factor though. You must be sure to write the other factor. Of course, it is going to be the same number line. And we will have 5. And make sure you write the 5 right over the other 5. All right, we have our number lines drawn. Now we go back and we decide where the positives and the negatives are for each factor. And again, if, you, if I'm going too fast, this is all taught in the a previous video and I did that did do that much slower in that video this is a very complex problem because I have four factors alright this method works though uh, when you have several factors that's why I'm showing you this method I think it's one of the best when you have ne several factors you have to work with. All right, let's go back to the first factor, 3x minus 2. We want to know where it is positive. We know where it equals 0. Where is it positive? Try a number to the right of 2 thirds. Any number to the right of 2 thirds. Let's just pick 3. If I use a 3, 3 times 3 in this would be a 9. 9 minus 2 is 7. Now that's a positive 7. I think you'll find that if you pick another number to the right of the two-thirds like uh, say one one is to the right of two-thirds you put a one here you'll get three take away two is one a positive number all the numbers that you will try to the right of the two-thirds should give you a positive number so write a lot of positives here to the right of the two-thirds now in the same way if you choose numbers to the left of the two-thirds you will get negative numbers so to the left of two-thirds, write the negative. All right, we go to the next factor, and we do the same thing. Uh, we take numbers to the right of the negative 4. If you choose numbers to the right of the negative 4, for example, you could take the 0. Uh, if you 0 plus 4 is 4. That's a positive number. So when I tested the 0, he became positive. Uh, try negative 2, if you like. Negative 2 plus 4 is a positive 2. So I have a positive again. You will find that all the numbers to the right of this 4 are positive. You need to write plenty of positives. Then if you test the numbers to the left, you will get a negative. I really have got this a little close. I'm sorry. I'm going to move that negative 4 over just a little bit. So just I paused the video a second there and cleaned that up, made it look a little neater for you. All right, so we have our positives to the right of the negative 4. We have our negatives to the left. Now, in the other video, I gave you a warning, and I'm going to tell you right now the same thing. Don't assume that the positives are always on the right side and the negatives are on the left. That is not true. The books do like to make up problems that do that, but there are just as many problems that have negatives on the right. So let's see what happens now that I've said that. Let's try a number to the right of the 5. If I choose a number to the right of this 5, like for example, I could choose 6. If I use a 6, what is 5? Subtract 6. Well, 5 subtract 6 is a negative. So I just got a negative number here. Let's try another number to the right of 5. For example, 10. 10. 5 subtract 10 is a negative number. So you see, I was careful to make sure that you saw that 
we could have problems where the negatives are on the right. And you will test now, if you choose numbers to the left of 5, you will find that they will all be positive. The positives and de negatives will not mix together on a number line. They will always be separated. All the positives in one place, all the negatives in the other. Let's go ahead and do the second factor of 5 minus x the same way. You will get the same results. Okay, now that we have, I hope yours is a little neater than mine, but now that we have all the number lines completed, our next step is to draw vertical lines. We will draw a vertical line through all the number lines at each of the places that we found them equal to zero, the two-thirds, the negative four, the five, and the five. So we'll just have a double vertical line there. All right, I'm going to start with the two-thirds. I'm going to draw a vertical line. I think maybe I'll change colors. That might help us a little bit since everything's getting a little messy here. I'm drawing a vertical line very carefully through two-thirds. I will draw a vertical line now all the way through for negative four. I will draw a vertical line now for the fives. You want to draw the vertical line all the way through, all the way to the bottom. You want to divide it up even down here at the bottom because that's where we're going to try writing our solutions. All right, now remember at the beginning of this problem we said that we wanted a negative or a zero. Now to get the zero we will follow step six here which means the numerator equals zero and I'll come back to that. The numerator equals zero. All right, let's look at where we will get a negative. Now remember, we're multiplying two things at the top, and then we're dividing by five minus x squared. Now I hope you all know five minus x squared is really going to always be positive, but I want you to see that here. Look at the two number lines. You have a positive times a positive that would give you a positive. I'm looking at the number lines for 5 minus x. We have a positive times a positive, a positive times a positive, or in this region we have a negative times a negative. But what is a negative times a negative? It's a positive. So no matter what I do, which region I look in, there are four regions here to look, consider, our denominator is always going to be positive. But let's look at all four of them together because that's what this problem is really about. It's four factors. Two are multiplied, two are divided, but fortunately the multiply rules and the divide rules for real numbers are the same. All right, what's a negative times a negative? I'm looking in the first region. A negative times a negative is a positive and then that positive divided by these positives would give me a positive. I'm going to write that here at the bottom. This will give me a positive answer. Now remember that is not what we wanted. We do want negatives. But let's go on. Look at the second region. What's a negative times a positive? A negative times a positive is a negative. Then a negative divided by these positives would give me a negative. The third region, a positive times a positive. Two positives multiplied give you a positive. When you multi divide those by a positive, you will get a positive again. So the third region results in a positive answer. And then on the fourth region, a positive times a positive is a positive. This positive is divided by the positive denominator. We have positives divided by positive. That gives me a positive region. Each of these regions tells me about this big expression up here. These four number lines considered in each of the four regions. And the four regions came from us studying the signs, the positive and negative signs. Well, now remember, we want a negative. Well, we have only one answer. You can have several answers. You don't always get just one answer. It will vary with the problem that you work. So don't consider it just one answer of what you'll always get. Now what is this region? 
Well, it goes from a negative 4 all the way up to 2 thirds. Do you know how to write that? That would mean that x is less than 2 thirds, but x is greater than the negative 4. Now, this is inequality notation. Now, again, if you are getting lost, this was all taught in the earlier video, too. Now, we need to consider this, though. Where is the numerator equal to 0? The numerator is 3x plus 3x minus 2. Where does that equal 0? x is 2 equal to 2 thirds. So we can put an equal marks here. Or our numerator is also x plus 4 equals 0. Well, that meant x equals a negative 4. x is a negative 4. We can put that here. Now let me consider step 7. Step 7 does say something important. When is a fraction undefined? When its denominator equals 0. 5 minus x equals 0 is something we do not want. So let's make sure. Where is this true? Where x is a 5. Now we do not want our fraction to be undefined. Is 5 in this? Is the number 5 in this interval? No, it's not. If it happened to have been in this interval, we would have to exclude it. We would have to remove it. This cannot be a part of our solution. When you have found the regions that are what you want for your solution, in this case the negative, be sure that you check to make sure none of those numbers will make your denominator equal 0. Don't forget the seventh step. Make sure that the fraction will not become undefined in the interval that you have chosen for your solution. So our final answer can also be written in the interval notation. It starts at negative 4. If you want to begin with a negative 4 and include a negative 4, you will use a bracket, then negative 4, comma, and we will go all the way up to the 2 thirds. And since we also want to include the 2 thirds, I will use another bracket here to end this. I might mention, if you did not want to include the 2 thirds, uh, you would use a parenthesis here. But that would be for a different problem than what we have here. So if you need to learn how to do both of these for your class, this one is called the interval notation. And the one up here is called the inequality notation. This is Susan Johnson with mathinabox.com. If you have any questions, please email me. Thank you.